I have three things in common with Superman. Number one, I believe in the American way. Growing up in Argentina, I was a huge fan of movies and cartoons, but because I didn't know English, um, I watched all those movies and cartoons dubbed to Spanish. Um, <laughs> sorry, I got lost here. Movies and cartoons in Latin America are mostly dubbed in Mexico. But not only did I not know they were dubbed at all, I also just thought they were from Argentina and that what I now know is Mexican accent was just how movies and cartoons sounded. <laughs> all that great pop culture made me feel proud of the level of content my country produced. Eventually, I grew up and learned that they were not Argentinian. They were from the United States, and they were originally in English. And you should have seen my surprise the first time I met a Mexican person. <laughs> but mostly, I didn't really like anything from my country. So completely brainwashed by the American way I saw on TV, I decided that one day I would move to the United States and take a job away from an American. Because that's the Latin American way. <laughs> a way for me to do that was to get a job in the advertising industry as a creative and network my way into getting a job here. My opportunity came in 2011 when my boss came to me asking if I could go to Miami for one week to work with all the top creatives of all the advertising agencies in the Latin American network to pitch and win a huge new client with a huge international bank. But I know my boss is not asking me because I'm the most talented creative they have in our office. It's not like someone went to my boss's office and told them, hey, uh, we need to send someone to represent us in Miami. And my bosses both looked at each other and at the same time went, let's send Frank. And then they both jumped in the air and high-fived and froze there for a bit. <laughs> no, my boss actually came to my office and with a look of absolute defeat in his face just said, please tell me you have a passport with a tourist visa to enter the US because no one else has, and I don't know who to ask anymore. <laughs> so I really can't fuck this up. <laughs> we leave on a Sunday because we have to start working on Monday morning, and at the airport I meet the guy that I'm traveling with. Let's just call him Lex Luthor. <laughs> Although he looks more like a Mormon on a casual Friday at the office. We're not on the same team, so we don't really know each other. All I know is that besides being advertising creatives, we're both musicians. Mostly because he wants to bragging about his band being on MTV, <laughs> while I tell him how my band brought like 15 people to our last concert. <laughs> he also tells me that he doesn't know anyone in Miami, and I tell him that I do have some friends there, and I'm hanging out with them that night when we arrive, and I also invite him to tag along because I may not be on MTV, but at least I have friends. <laughs> that night, after checking in at the hotel, we hang out at my friend's apartment. We have a good time. We, we smoke a little weed and whatnot. And before we leave, I remember my friend telling me he has a Vespa scooter I can borrow to move around Miami that week. Now, I have never ridden a motorcycle before in my life, but this is a Vespa, how hard can it be? <laughs> it's basically an overweight bicycle. So before I leave, I ask my friend to teach me how to ride it. And as I go to the garage of the apartment building where he lives, I grab the helmet and I put it on my head as a joke to feel like a real rider, right? <laughs> Once in the garage, my friend says, it's very simple. It's like driving stick. Do you know how to drive stick? And I'm like, do I know how to drive stick? What, what, what kind of question is that to ask? A oh, man, do I know how to drive stick? <laughs> so with my friend and Lex Luthor watching, I get on the Vespa to ride it around the garage just a little bit, just to get the gist of it. I expect it to go nice and easy like a car, but instead, in a second, I'm going at a million miles per hour <laughs> toward a black BMW I seriously cannot afford. And I realized my friend never told me how to stop the Vespa, which is a pretty crucial piece of information, I think. 
All, all I can do is jump off the Vespa, <laughs> hitting a concrete pillar really hard with my head that I luckily protected with a helmet as a joke to feel like a real rider. <laughs> because who needs a helmet to drive a fat bicycle in a garage, right? <laughs> then I fall to the ground even harder. I get up as fast as I can with a good old bullshit. I'm okay! My entire body is in pain. Mostly my shoulder that I try to move to prove the I'm okay! And I hear a loud oh. Yeah. With the help of my friend and Lex Luthor, I walk toward the elevator back to my friend's apartment to assess the situation. As for the Vespa, I have no idea what happened to it. My friend told me not to worry about it, and I never bothered to ask again. <laughs> Once we're back in the apartment, Lex Luthor is freaking out. My friend says I have to go to the hospital right now, but Lex is completely against it. He thinks that if I go to the hospital, the doctors are going to call the cops because I smoked some weed earlier that night, which makes absolutely no sense. Why would the doctors do that? Why would they even know that's what happened? Are they going to test me for weed because I'm hurt like that? But I get it. He's afraid that if, if, if they call the cops, we're going to get in trouble at work, which still doesn't make any sense at all. This man is an idiot. But even if that happens, why would he get in trouble? I was the one who crashed the Vespa. <laughs> Does he think they're going to make him my accomplice or something like that just because he was just standing there? He wishes. Superman doesn't have a sidekick, and neither do I. <laughs> the thing is, I'm in such pain and shock that, that I start second guessing myself. Maybe he's right? My friend is trying to be really polite with Lex, uh, but I know that his kind, kind words of disagreement are really a, are you fucking kidding me? Go to the hospital right now. But Lex Luthor insists so much that he convinces me. So I have to come up with a lie for us to, to, to say at work to keep us both from getting in trouble. But thing number two that I have in common with Superman I can't lie. In the comic books and movies, one of the things about Superman is that he can't lie. That's why his attempt at hiding his secret identity is so stupid. Uh, I can't let anyone know I'm Superman. Uh, I know, I I'm going to put on uh, glasses and go by Clark and try to awkwardly hit on a coworker. That is as stupid as the lie that I come up with that night when I tell my coworker, listen, don't worry about work. Everyone knows we're not friends, so you just go to work tomorrow and tell them that you were not with me. I was alone with, with, with my friend, and, and, and he was driving the Vespa, and uh, I, was, I was sitting behind him, and, and we were going a little fast, and, and when we crossed a speed bump, I fell backwards. Tomorrow, when the two puffs of weed were off, I'm going to go to the hospital, and then I'm going to go to work the next day. He agrees. When we make it back to the hotel, he helps me get to my room and sits me down on the bed. And now, this is a man that I basically just met that day for the first time, and I just asked him to lie big time with me. But there's one more thing that I need from him. Before he leaves my room, I go, can you help me take off my pants? I can't do it on my own. <laughs> and as he reluctantly starts doing it, I add, I guess we're going to have to lie about this too now, right? <laughs> the next day I go to the hospital and I find out that I broke my collarbone, two ribs, and I cracked the head of the femur where it connects to the hip. Being the man of steel is not the third thing that I have in common with Superman, <laughs> clearly. I'm sorry. <laughs> then I learned that the USA has an opioid crisis for a really good reason. The doctor gives me these amazing painkillers. I would never get something like that in Argentina. You know what I would get? Free healthcare. But I'm liking these, these painkillers way, way more. 
I take one every morning, and they give me the energy to walk the seven blocks from the hotel to the office, work eight hours straight, keep up the lie about the accident, walk back the seven blocks to the hotel, get a slice of pizza and plumb it on the bed, only to repeat it all again every day for the rest of the week. And it worked. We won the account, and my bosses back home got a call saying I did an awesome job. Well, we did an awesome job. <laughs> it's then that I start getting cocky. My plan worked. Days later, back in Argentina, my bosses asked me some questions about the accident. They sound suspicious. So you fell backwards when you crossed the speed bump, but you hurt mostly your right side? <laughs> yeah, well, um, um, so yeah, I mean, I have, have cat-like reflexes. <laughs> Like a ninja almost. So mid-air, I turned around to protect my body. Or it could have been much, much worse. I answer so swiftly and confidently, they eventually stop asking me questions. I get away with it. I might get a job and move to the US after all. All I have to do is wait for that call. Some weeks later, at the peak of my greatness, one of my teammates, tired of my arrogance, tells me, shut up, just, just shut the fuck up. I'm tired of you. The night of your accident, after Lex Luthor left your room, he went back to his room and called the VP of the agency and told him all the truth. <laughs> Everyone knows what happened. You're lucky you didn't get fired because you did a good job, but do say goodbye to getting a job in the US now. And he was right. That guy sold me out. I thought that taking off my pants had built an unbreakable bond between us. <laughs> But I guess I was wrong. I didn't get a job and moved to the US back then, but a couple of years later, a friend of mine who worked in an advertising agency in Los Angeles recommended me for a job, and I got it, and I finally moved to the United States. Because I may not be on MTV, but at least I have friends. <laughs> and the visa they gave me to move to this wonderful country was an O-1 visa. That's a talent visa they give artists. And its legal definition is alien with extraordinary abilities. <laughs> and that's the third thing that I have in common with Superman. Frank Trainer, everybody. Frank Trainer. Give it a pro.